translating the Latin Vulgate into that local language for those people. You know, this whole thing, well, if they didn't have the text as receptive, you know. Okay, the Bible was being translated from Latin into local languages for several hundred years before we ended up with a English language Bible. Okay, but the people who are doing this you know, if you remember from our study on the history of the New Testament church, okay, were our direct spiritual ancestors going all the way back to Antioch and Syria who are going out uh, and are taking the gospel. Again, Latin is the so common language, you know, for, you know, if you're dealing with educated people for several hundred years. But You've got it being translated into Russian. You have it being translated uh, into German. You have it being translated into the Nordic languages. You have it being translated uh, in, in, into French, into Irish, into Spanish. All over, the, you know. And of course, as fast as the, 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 the Church of Rome can, they're, they're trying to stamp these people out and burn these books up and get rid of them, you know, and, uh, as fast as they can. So you're going to find, did they have the word? Yeah, they had the word of God either in the Latin Vulgate or if they had their own written language. It, it didn't take long before it was being translated into their own local languages. And it had been like that. Okay. That God has seen to it that we have had his word all throughout human history. The English language Bible, the authorized version that we have today, is just the end of an incredibly long line of from spoken to written copies of God's Word. You know, well, how can we be sure that? Because God. That's what they keep discussing. That's the whole point. That's why I say that, you know, the whole battle is about final authority when it comes to the Word of God. You know, do we have God? Because, see, if we don't have God's Word, if we can't, if you take God out of the equation, then, yeah, how in the world did we manage to keep it? No, my Bible says, yeah. in the beginning, God created. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> you know. But, you know, the question that comes <clears throat> with that is, well, you know, you know, this or that, you know, and all the different, I mean, arguments, about, and I say, we'll come to some of that stuff. You know. But the simple fact of the matter is, yeah, God has preserved his word. And the process that he did it, you know, was via written language. And, you know, for us, as we follow that history of things, you know, the Latin Vulgate, you know, after the first century becomes, that becomes the primary number one tool right there. And like I say, Latin, I mean, I mean, today, I mean, if, if you study science or medicine, you pretty much almost have to know Latin. You know, that's the, that was, so much of that was done, I mean, the French tried for a while to make French be the, the, the world language, but, you know, uh, didn't happen. French is, you know, you know French is, French is a Latinized Gaelic. <laughs> it's Latin. You know, that's what French is. It's a Latinized Gaelic. Okay. Uh, Latin remained the, the language of the educated world right up to the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, Really, it wasn't until uh, the 20th century that English supplanted that. You know, and I mean, pretty much from, the, from 1900 coming forward, we know English has become the universal language of the world. And that is why, I mean, you think about it, okay? 
little tiny island of England. Okay. You know what what used to be the you know the motto of England: the sun never sets on the British Empire. They took the English language all around the world. Every place where England was in the world, people speak English. They write and read English. Okay, English is the most common second language learned all around the world. Guess what English they learn? They sure don't learn American English. Okay? Guess what they learn? They learn British English. That's why this guy with his new King James in, in India, where they speak English, okay, they, they have no problem <laughs> with the authorized version of the Bible because that's the English they learn. Is British English. I don't know, American English is such a convoluted, ridiculous way. <laughs> Anyways, what did they use? Well, started with oral tradition, passing on. This is what God has said. And we can see that, you know, quite a long time. Now, certainly by the time of Isaac, we've got the Word of God as being written down. We certainly know that we've got it by the time of Moses, you know, being, and I mean, they've got specialized Levites, the scribes, whose sole job was to copy and preserve the Word of God and pass it along. I mean, you know, every synagogue got a copy of the Word of God in it. You know, how they get it? Somebody wrote it down. Okay, and they had to make sure. I mean, all through the so-called Dark Ages, okay, you had monks who were scribes. What was their job? What they did day and night? They sit down and they make copies of the Word of God. They had, you know, I saw a funny cartoon the other day. The, the, the scribe is asleep at his desk, and there the copier broke down again. <laughs> Yeah, and then along came printing presses, Gutenberg's printing press. Yeah. Uh, and look how what printing, what, you figure God didn't know that this was all going to happen. God doesn't have the ability to keep and preserve his words for us. That's the whole issue right there. Any questions? Any comments? Anything that anybody needs repeated? Like I say, next week we'll come back to this same subject. We'll pick it up with the Latin Vulgate. Uh, we're going to talk about what the Alexandrian cult, as they've come to be called, uh, has attempted to do to destroy God's word. And it continues right down into today. All right, so we'll stop there for this morning.